for Senior Talk, which is brought to you by Solon American Legion and Windmill Manor in Coralville. Here's your host, Rex Brandstatter. <clears throat> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. This is Rex Brandstatter. Thank you very much, Tommy. On such a nice, nice day in December, ladies and gentlemen, December. And uh, we're going to go with what we have out there. It's not too bad. Going to get better for the next two days. And as you just heard from the weather report, Saturday's going to be kind of rainy, blowy, iffy. So uh, if you got anything to do, you have to do, you need to get done in the next couple of days, you want to just go outside and enjoy the beautiful Iowa countryside. We've got about a, a two-day, a two-and-a-half-day stretch to do it. So listen, folks, welcome to Senior Talk, uh, the weekly radio program where we try to identify, examine, and share important and timely information for we seniors. And thank you so much. Uh, for turning in, uh, tuning in and spending a few moments out of your busy day to listen to Senior Talk. And as always, I'll do my very best to bring a lot of senior information that could be important to you, maybe someone in your family, uh, maybe uh, uh, some friends of yours, some acquaintances, maybe some for friends you drink coffee with, maybe somebody from your church, your work. And uh, we'll also uh, try to cook up some fun recollections of past people, places, things, and events. And I just had a phone call on the way down here to the beautiful... KCJJ Studios, where all the corn is picked, and we're sitting out in the middle of a cornfield, Iowa style, way I call it. And they wanted to know if uh, if uh, if there was ever a cowboy named Lash Larue. And uh, I'm an old uh, Western cowboy fan, and yes, there was Lash Larue. And uh, what he did was, if you remember the old serials, La or the old cowboy movies, the B movies, Lash Larue, his big thing was he carried a whip, and uh, when it got to it, he also had a gun, but he just whipped those guys. <laughs> He'd get that thing, and he'd whip the bad guys. And, and uh, another little uh, thing that I learned is that Lash LaRue was married 11 times. That's more than you, many of most. <laughs> 11 times, and at the end of his life, he was living out of his car. So uh, he went from being a cowboy hero, Lash LaRue, to living out of the old uh, Pontiac station wagon. So, Well, listen, folks, as long as you're listening in, why don't you sit back and uh, grab yourself a sandwich and an ice-cold root beer and let's see what we can uh, cook up here on Senior Talk. My name is Rex Brandstatter. I'm 74 years old, and I think that we seniors have a lot on our minds, and we're going to talk about it, and that is for sure. Uh, I've been a licensed Iowa real estate broker here in uh, Iowa, working mostly in Coralville, Iowa City, Johnson County area, since 1974, uh, helping people sell and buy houses, investment properties, commercial properties, and uh, uh, and other issues with uh, leases and commercial leases and things like that. If you'd like to talk about that, whether it's you or someone in your family, I meet with you, the seniors. I meet with the seniors and their families, and the, and the, their their son or daughters uh, might be in their 50s, you know, you never know, or older. Um, and we talk about uh, your upcoming or future uh, uh, needs or wants or, or uh, desires in the real estate business. And for that, and for any other issues you'd like to talk to me about that I could help you or at least find someone who can help you with your issues, please give me a call at 319-330-5534. That's my senior line, 330-5534. And speaking of the old cowboy movies, uh, they were just great. And back when we were all kids in the 50s, uh, there was hardly any uh, TV show, any uh, cow, uh, excuse me, police shows, Dragnet, I suppose. Uh, not many of them around because they were so, so heavy with the uh, cowboys and, and old western stuff. And uh, I fell in love with that as a kid, and I, I still uh, uh, I still have the, the Roy Rogers uh, rules of uh, for uh, uh, you're supposed to live by clean your plate at night and be nice to your parents and things like that. And I also have Gene Autry's. I have them framed in, in, in my office at home. So uh, try try to do what I can. They taught me a lot, and then I had a lot of fun watching Gene and Roy. And a lot of people didn't like Gene and Roy because they sang too much on, on the program, which is true. Uh, but it all kind of fit in. Of course, we have many, many other ones that we listened to and watched uh, later on in life. Uh, they were all my buddies, too. So uh, thanks for taking time, and let's see what we can uh, cook up here uh, uh, today. Well, uh, as you know, we're sliding into, into December already, and, and I say already because today at the, our first meeting here on Senior Talk this month, we're, it's already the 6th, uh, and tomorrow, now that means tomorrow is, uh, is an important day. The number one important day for things tomorrow on December 7th is what? Uh, growing up, this never, this never went unnoticed, this never went unannounced, this never went uh, past that day uh, without any uh, uh, recollections of it uh, in our family because it's Pearl Harbor Day. And the old saying is, we'll never forget Pearl Harbor, and we won't. Uh, the Japanese attacked the United States. Uh, 
un, uh, unprovoked attack on Pearl Harbor, and we lost uh, oh, uh, 2,800 to 3,200 people that have ever come up with the exact number. So we're going to say 3,000 men and women, or, and uh, lots and lots more. Those are, those are service personnel. Uh, and lots lots more were uh, wounded, and uh, uh, of course, they we uh, immediately were in war with the Japanese on World War II the next day. So it changed the world. And the anniversary, I think it's the 82nd anniversary is tomorrow. That'd be about right, is tomorrow. So at our house, my dad was a World War II Army uh, veteran. He, but he, was, he wasn't down there. He was over in Africa and France. But uh, it never went without notice at our house. And we always took him in. My mom's boyfriend at the time, uh, a, a classmate. Let's call it classmate. Because she and my dad were uh, writing together, writing together during World War II. But uh, one of her classmates at uh, Muscatine High School, uh, class of 1940, uh, by the way, that, that gentleman, I can't remember his name, but I, if I heard it, I'd know it. Uh, he enlisted in the Navy right out of high school in 1940, and, and uh, my mom remembered, always remembered, that when he was home on leave, or, or excuse me, home after boot camp. And then on leave at one point, he was all excited because he's going to get to go to Hawaii. And then back in those days, he had to look on a globe. A globe to see where it was. Well, it was halfway around the world, and he was going to be assigned to the Arizona. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he is still on the Arizona to this day. And when my wife were out, were out there in Hawaii, we took that little uh, motor, that little ship thing, little boat thing, um, ferry, I guess, it out, out to the uh, official uh, uh, Pearl Harbor monument. And there's his name from Muscatine, Iowa. He's still on the Arizona. So that's what it means to lots and lots of families. Uh, lots of people, I, as far as I know, there are no survivors if in the military uh, from Pearl Harbor left. If I'm misspeaking and misspoken, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, lots and lots of heroes for sure. So that's tomorrow is Pearl Harbor Day. And, you know, we've had a little snow. We had a couple of skiffs of snow here a couple of times. And I would ask you this. Are you ready to deal with it? Uh, how about walking? You know, it's uh, so easy to slip. And as seniors, sometimes we can just uh, slip on our own volition without any help. But now we're going to have some snow and ice at some point. So uh, my warning is just be careful. And I say that even to myself because ice just scares the tar out of me. And, and uh, uh, when you try not to slip and fall, that's when you that's intentionally, that's when you do it. So just just be darn careful. As long as I'm talking about ice and snow, which, God, it makes me, I don't even know why I am. But make sure you have an ice scraper in your car. Oh, rats, I better get that out the water. This is a warning. You better get one going. Throw a flash right in there, too. Well, well many of you probably have guests coming for the holidays. And uh, uh, some will be in town for a day or maybe to spend the afternoon at your house and uh, soak up your turkey or whatever. And sometimes you need to find some interesting things to do. Or maybe your kids are coming with the grandkids and they're going to stay a few days. <clears throat> and at some point, you know, they're gonna, your kids are going to go visit some longtime friends and things like that. And you might get, and when I say this, I don't mean the way it sounds. You might get stuck with the grandkids for a couple of afternoons. Well, you know, you can only play so many games of Yahtzee or Goldfish or depending on their age. But I have some things I think you could do. Here's what I do. I like to drag people and get them out of the house. Uh, anybody can sit around and watch TV baloney. We don't need to do that uh, at this point. You need to go see some things, do some things. And as we all know in this town uh, over Christmas vacation, all the students are gone. So downtown Iowa City, and I'm uh, I, uh, please go visit the retailers and all the places down there and, uh, all, at any time, for sure. All the good people of, uh, of our friends, uh, and your friends, my friends, have businesses downtown. But the students will be gone, so it's a little less pressure down there. If you want to go downtown, it's a good time to go. But it's also a great time to go see some local museums. And let me tell you a couple of them that I think you should consider. Now, a couple of these have a little fee, but it's not very much. And you could take the whole carload of grandkids out there and they'll make you a deal. Uh, that type of thing. And there's the free one, too. If you have a grandkids and they're kind of peewee grandkids and they're be between the ages, I'm going to say, 3 and 7 or 8 or 3 and 10 or something like that, you could head out to the Coral Ridge Mall and go to the Children's Museum out there. That's a wonderful place. I've been through it. Now, why Rex, you big, you're 74 years old, why would you go through it? Well, because I deal with people out of town in my job a lot of times, and uh, if they have kids, I like to know what's out there. And as part of the community, I like to know what's out there, Children's Museum. So, yes, I've been through it. Great place to take your kids, and more than likely, your grandkids might figure out some of those uh, things they have and puzzles and riddles and things like that, and you won't know it. They'll, be, they'll outsmart you. <clears throat> which is not hard to do when I'm with your group. Uh, so that'd be a great one to go. And there, you can go around the corner. You can get them a Coke at the, at the food court there. Uh, you can get them a, a sandwich. You can have a, make kind of an afternoon of it. 
at the Children's Museum at the, at the Corridge Mall. You could also go to the Johnson County Historical Society Museum. Now, this would be uh, your, your little kids, your grandkids won't really uh, go gung-ho for that, but uh, uh, maybe you've got some of your longtime senior friends that are coming to town and you're looking for a place to go hang out. That's a great place to go. It really, really is. And right next door in the, in the same building, and this is in the Extreme Arena. And a lot of parking in that area down there, in immediate area right there in front of the Extreme Arena, uh, where they play hockey and all those places in Corville, and it's on the lower level, uh, easy to get into right along East 9th Street there, right by the roundabout, just past the roundabout to the east of it there, about the 20 yards, there's a door, and, and it's his museum, the Johnson County Historical Museum and the Antique Car Museum are in the lower level, and you can take an elevator right down, push a button, go down one floor, and you're there. There's two museums for the price of one. You get to see them both. You can spend... Actually, you can spend a lot of time down there, but easily a couple, easily, easily a couple hours. And they've got some of the neatest old cars down there. They great stuff in there. They've got some wonderful displays of uh, motor motor memorabilia. Uh, I call it all kinds of things like signs and advertising. It's a great place to go. Now you don't have to wait for Christmas to go down there, and you don't have to wait to have company to go to these places. Uh, if you are a couple of seniors and you think, "What are we going to do this afternoon, Alice?" Or this morning, those, those spaces usually open about 10 o'clock. They're not open on Mondays, but the other, other days of the week they're open. And uh, feel free to give them a call. The Johnson County Historical Society Museum and the Eastern Iowa Antique Auto Museum are down there. They great places to go and spend some time, uh, for sure. I, I highly advise that. That's for two. Uh, if you want to have some other funds with, with any kind of any age people, uh, little little people over there, they might get bored, but they but not as fast as you think. You could go over to Iowa Hall, that's in McBride Auditorium on Pentecost Campus at University of Iowa, and you need to go through Iowa Hall, and Iowa Hall has got all the old. Remember, you going down there as a kid? We did all the time as a kids. We went in there all the time in the summers. Uh, we'd ride our bikes downtown or walk the Crandy tracks from Corville, Iowa City, anything we could to get downtown, to go to movie theaters and walk around downtown and weigh ourselves on the big. Uh, on the big scales over at the First National Bank, ride the escalator at Yonkers. Now, that was a biggie. Ride the escalator at Yonkers, ride it up, and then take the steps back down. Do it two or three times till we figured they were catching on. We were just a bunch of kids goofing around, and before they'd throw us out, we'd leave there. And then we'd head over. Oh, we had a row. We'd head over to the Iowa State, at that time, Iowa State Bank building, and then they had a lady at that point, most of the time, who ran the elevator. Her job was to run. You'd get in there. What floor? We thought, we always said fifth floor or sixth, whatever the top floor was. Because that's where we wanted to go. You get to ride the elevator longer, so she knew we were up to no good. But we weren't. We were just kids, uh, tennis shoes and gym and, and, and jeans on and T-shirts, you know. And we'd ride up. Then we'd race down those steps and try to beat her back down and ride it back up. Then after about two times, she'd either tell us to get lost or we were figured out we were going to get told to get lost. Well, that was a big thing for us. Well, that's what you could do downtown. <laughs> Uh, you can't do those things, I don't suppose, uh, but, but I suppose. But uh, you could have some fun downtown going uh, over to uh, uh, the museum. And if, while you're there on the campus, the, there's also a museum over at the Old Capitol. And I do not know the hours of the Old Capitol uh, Museum, but there is one there. So there's two two right, right there, right right across the street from downtown. You can walk across the street at any time, get yourself a sandwich and a root beer, and uh, and have it make a, a fun afternoon of that, too. Well, you could also go... Uh, to the Hoover Museum over in West Branch. And you think, oh, boy, that's a long ways over there. It's nine miles, folks, nine miles. And I don't know if there's a fee. There might be a fee. I don't remember. I've been, excuse me, several times. I don't remember if there's a fee or not. Um, it's a presidential library, and there aren't very many. Are there, are there nine presidential libraries? Does that ring a bell? For some reason, maybe there's six or eight or nine. And we've got one of them nine miles from Iowa City. And, and uh, it's it's a wonderful place inside. A lot a lot of good American U.S. government history over there for sure. Um, just a great place to go and, and things to do in West Branch. So there's just a couple of things I'm trying to help you out. You don't sit around and play Yahtzee all afternoon with your grandkids and wishing you were doing something. Take them over there and have some lot of fun. Um, I want to ask you a question. This this is a good question for you, and, and uh, 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 let's see if if you can answer a yes or no to this. So here's the deal. You need an ambulance. You need the fire department. You need the police department. You need someone to come to your home. Can they find your house numbers? Can they drive down the street and say, there's 1202, there's 1204, we're looking for 1226. Can they go, there's 1254. One of these four houses must be 1226. Now, this sounds like elementary stuff 101, but so many people do not have their house number outside their house. 
Oh, it's on the mailbox. Well, half the time your mailbox is all leaning over and smashed up and you can't read it. It's on the curb. And then you get six inches of snow and ice on it gets the curb and you can't see it. Your your house number, if you get a, want to get a building permit now and it bought any community around here for sure, you have to show them where your house numbers are going to be. Now, I spent tw I spent 20 years on the Cornwall Fire Department, and when we're looking for the fire, the old joke was, we'll just drive slow, but we'll see the smoke. Well, obviously, we can't do that, uh, but that was a kind of our standard amongst us guys. And so, well, we'll just look for the smoke. We'll find it. Anyhow, you need to have your house numbers out front. You can go to Lowe's. You can go to Menards. You can go to Lenox and Selig, uh, other places, uh, and buy the numbers. And you can nail them in. You can put them on the board in, your, in the luxury of your own shop and then nail the board to the side of the house and then do it right in the spring, Okay. The hardest ones to deal with, if you're the firefighter or the police or the ambulance guys or women, is the ones that spelled out, 136. Uh, just put the numbers up. It's hard to read 136 or 10, uh, 10, uh, you know, 1497. It's just hard to read that in the cursive. Just put the numbers up. That helps everybody. So if you're at home, well, we've been going to do that. Get with, call me. I'll give you a guy who can come over and do it. How's that sound? He'll go down to the store, but, but you're a 1006. He'll go buy a one, a zero, and another zero and a six, and he'll put them on the side of your house for you. Yes, you'll have to pay the numbers, and yes, you have to pay him, but he'll tell you how much it's going to be. Uh, they need to be legible, and the, the, obvious, the obvious place for them is near the front door. That's where everybody looks for your house. I want you to do that. And if you don't have that, ah, everybody knows where we live. Well, the ambulance guy, he doesn't know where you live. He doesn't know you from a hot rock, and he's supposed to come to your house. So it's, it, You know, your folks would say, oh, it's for your own good. <laughs> My brother and I look at each other and roll our eyes. Oh, if it's for our own good, it can't be any fun. <laughs> well, that's what I'm telling you. This is fun. This is for your own good. Get your house numbers up. So, all right. So, you know, the, the other thing I was going to tell you, this is the time of year, and maybe even before, but before, uh, I always had some, my, uh, following my dad's footsteps, between between Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, was we had to get the oil changed in the car for winter, and we had to get snow tires put on. Make the annual trip. In fact, we dealt, uh, my dad dealt at a couple of different gas stations, one of them always for the snow tires. He, they kept his snow tires there over the summer. They put, a, they put a rope around him, had his name on it. He'd go down there and say, I need the snow tires, and then they'd take those two off the back. Uh, put our regular tires there and put them up on the rack. It, it, kind of a neat deal. They'd change the oil, and he'd take it down there, and he'd pick it up in the afternoon and uh, whatever, whatever it was. You know, you got an appointment out there. We don't do that anymore because everybody's got a front-wheel drive car. Now, in 1966, I believe, was the first really, really serious attempt at front-wheel drive, if I recall, and that was with the Oldsmobile Toronado. And then they hit they hit the ground running with it with that, and then uh, General Motors never looked back. I don't know that Ford has a lot of. I don't really don't know the inner working of that, but General Motors started the whole thing uh, probably way way back. I would imagine they had front wheel drive, but they really hit mass production with the Oldsmobile Tornado when they came out. I believe in the fall of '64, which had made them in 1965 Olds Tornado. Do you remember those? Sure you do. Sure you do. All right. Um, well, um, I, I I want you to know that. Uh, um, uh, December 7th is not only Pearl Harbor Day, not only Pearl Harbor Day, but for we seniors, remember at the top there, I said there's two big things that December 7th is Pearl Harbor Day, yes, where we uh, take our take a moment and remember those who sacrificed and unknowingly and unwilling, unwillingly gave their lives for our country, but of that a tad. But tomorrow also is the end, as now that we're seniors, is the end of the uh, year open period to uh, all these ads on TV for Medicare gets you to sign up for Medicare. About 90% of them end tomorrow. There are some different programs that some of them offer. Those get to go to January 15th. But for the for most of them, they're going to be kaput. We'll be back to watching the Pioneer Seed Corn ads, which would be a welcome relief, by the way, uh, <laughs> for that. So that ends tomorrow. A lot of that stuff is gone. It's from October 1 until December the 7th. It ends tomorrow. Enough, enough, enough. Uh, if you're turning 65, you're going to be uh, asked uh, to join. You're, you're supposed to join Medicare, at least Part A, uh, and, 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 and or be, be because of it's, it's a group. They, they, we all save money because everybody gets on it. If you are employed at a company and, have, and they have their own med medical coverage, and, and if they have 20 or more, 20 or more, I believe it's 20 or more uh, um, 
employees, and they have their own program. You can stay on that, no problem. Uh, otherwise, you sign up for, for Medicare. And what they're all trying to push right now is they're trying to push a, uh, the Advantage plan. I went, my wife and I, we have an Advantage plan through Aetna. We have the Aetna Advantage plan, and it works for us. Uh, but uh, they're trying to get you the, uh, not not to sign up for Medicare. That's uh, you have to do that. But you'll get stuff in the mail before you're about a couple months before you're 65, and it's got nothing to do with uh, uh, anything else. AARP has got nothing to do with those uh, people. I had to clean that up a little bit. Uh, uh, but uh, they're trying to get you to buy the med, the gap insurance, the 20% insurance. What they're hu- uh, hucking right now is is uh, the 20% gap insurance on what Medicare Part A and Part B do not cover. That's what they're trying to get you to do. Trying to get you to change companies. You want to do that, uh, uh, have at it. It's entirely up to you. Maybe that makes a better deal. Who knows? That's why it's, it, it was open like that. Um, a senior man called and asked me, he says, I see the ads on TV and hear them on the radio about losing your house to bad guys who steal the title to your house. This is a really good question, folks. And she says, I see the ads on TV and here on the radio about losing your house. You're supposed to find you're supposed to buy a deed check or a deed save or something like that. And he says, can this happen here in Iowa City? Can this happen in Iowa? Well, I'm a real estate broker. OK, I have been for what, 49 years. And the answer to that is I don't know of anybody's lost their house this way. I know people who have lost their house because they didn't pay their taxes. You don't pay your taxes three years in a row. Iowa has a pretty funky uh, rule that uh, the person who's buying it, they can buy your house. They have to pay your tax bill, uh, things like that. If you don't pay them for three years, they can pay that, get a certificate, go down, and they can buy your house. Of course, they get the mortgage that goes with it. They get all kinds of things that go with it. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a really tough go. So my answer to this question, and the question is, can they steal your home and you didn't know it? But the answer to it is yes. I bet they can figure some ways out. Will they do it? My observation is, and I don't want to say too strong because they probably steal my house, <laughs> but it's really hard in Iowa. In Iowa, we are the, the we are the, the clunkiest, stodgiest way to transfer title to a house in the country. We rely on they have to you, you no no one will buy your house unless they have, read the abstract, have your attorney, have the buyer's attorney read an abstract. The seller, the seller has to get the abstract, and each parcel in Iowa has an abstract. Should have one when you buy a house, you demand to get the abstract. If not, the seller has to make you one. Uh, an abstract, which is the history of your property, a history of the title of your property, not not the fact that it's got oak floors and the the, the, the builder was Joe Schmo Construction Company. The history of the chain of title what is what it's all about, and uh, it has to be up to date. And in Iowa, uh, in order to do that, to transfer title, you have to get a title opinion. You should get a, if you're going to get a mortgage, you got to get a title opinion from an attorney. And then you have to pay the tax. The seller has to pay the taxes before the transfer title. Uh, the seller has to pay any liens. If you if you bought a lawnmower from Sears and you got an argument with Sears, and you told them you'd never pay your five hundred dollars you owed them for the lawnmower, and they file a lien, you're going to have to pay that in Iowa before you, or they're taking it out of your hide at closing. So it's pretty darn clunky to to buy. It. And Iowa does not have title insurance. These people always just go buy title insurance policy. Well, in Iowa, we don't even have it. The only state in the union does not have title insurance. You can buy title insurance, but it has to be uh, oh, Chicago title, uh, Rock Island title, Minneapolis title, all kinds. Of, nobody has it. Um, <clears throat> it's a tough go in Iowa. And the, the Iowa attorneys are all lobby. They always lobby for it or against it. They're about half and half, and it's just uh, it's never made it. I don't think I, when I say never because I can't say that. But they've tried it many, many times. It doesn't happen. So I say that the, the bad guys who are doing this are picking on states that's not as clunky and stuff as Iowa. That's that's my take. Not that they can't, not that something couldn't happen. But if you pay your taxes, uh, you're you're probably not going to. I don't know anybody that lost their house otherwise. Unless in a divorce, you could, you could lose it. But that's nothing that I got going on. So All right. Uh, we Since we don't have the title, it just slows down their process. And they're not going to monkey around. And mess around with a state that's got all these rules and regulations. That my guess is they're going to go somewhere else, for sure. So you know we're pretty stodgy about it here in Iowa, and it could happen, but but I doubt. Well, let's let, let's uh, let's do some things here. The end of the calendar year can also be the signal. Can also signal the end of an insurance policy for you. So here it is. We're in December. This could be the insurance at the end of your year for your car insurance. Uh, Maybe you've got a CD or two at the bank that come due at the end of the year. These things need your attention now. All right. 
Don't wait till the last day. Oh, my God, I got a CD that comes due at the end of the year, and today's the 31st. What's going to happen with these new rates? They're going to roll it over. It's your rate, not not the handy-dandy uh, up, up, up new rate, increased new rate. No. He banks are they know what they're doing. You need to pay some attention to that stuff. It could be the end of it. Uh, your insurance policy on the house. Your fire insurance on the house. Well, we got we got something in the mail, uh, folks. Don't uh, don't monkey around with this stuff. This is important stuff. Now, here's a real important thing I want you to consider. If you, the senior, can no longer handle your daily mail, your affairs, and and, or if you're the child of a senior and you're, you visit your mom and dad all the time or your grandma and grandpa, and on that kitchen table they've got a big pile of bills and invoices due and things like that, mail, unopened mail, you need to step in. If you're the senior, but it, it, maybe you're not cognizant anymore of what's here happening to you, but if you're, the, if you're the, the, the senior families and you see that, you need to take immediate action. There could be mortgage payment in there they forgot to make. There could be the car insurance they forgot to make. There could be a, a payment on the house insurance they forgot to make. All kinds of things could be on that kitchen table. And you go there and you see these big stacks of, Mom, what are you doing with all this? Oh, I'll take care of that. i got to get to that. Folks, they haven't and they won't. Because of the fact, as as we get older, you and I, we all get older, things like that, at, there comes to a certain point that they can't handle it. It's too, it's too frustrating. It's too much of a challenge for them. We're going to get right on that. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Next time you go there, I'll give you a little uh, a thing you could do. Go there. If you happen to just see that you go there for a cup of coffee and the mom has to clear off a place for you to have the coffee or whatever it might be, and, and uh, uh, go look in the refrigerator. Oh, I think i got to get something out of the refrigerator. Look in that refrigerator. They usually can't take care of the refrigerator either. There's all kinds of stuff in there, about 47 bottles of ketchup, which we had at our house when I was a kid. Anyhow, my dad used to dump them all together and make one. He'd have about six bottles of ketchup. My mom was kind of famous for that. <laughs> So that, that's one thing. But when mom or dad are seniors and can't do these things anymore, uh, that's where we, you, maybe maybe, uh, maybe, the, maybe you have a housekeeper and she tells you, but you know, your mom just got so much stuff in the refrigerator. Or there's so many piles, stuff like that. Folks, these are warning shots that need to be heated. H-E-E-D-E-D, heated, not heated, heated, H-E-E-D-E-D. That's a warning, a warning shot there, warning across the bow that they need help. And I can tell you from firsthand experience of people who I've dealt with in my real estate business, we find big stacks of things. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we found unpaid taxes. Now they're going to pay a penalty. We found unpaid uh, car insurance policies. Uh, it's just right there on the table, but they won't do it. Get with it. All right. Well, I'm ha happy to report that as kids for two years, uh, when I was a kid in Corville, we had an aluminum Christmas tree. <laughs> Everybody laughs at me and says, what's wrong with you people? Anybody have that? That's not Christmas. Well, it was at our house. And my dad would say, the hell with you. That's what we have. We don't care what you have. Leave us alone. Not only did we have aluminum Christmas tree, we had the color wheel, red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green. You could uh, watch it till your head caved in. It was red, yellow, green. And we had a big picture window. We put that thing in the picture window and that uh, red, yellow, green, and people have uh, told my folks they liked it. Whether or not they did, I don't know. My brother and I liked it as long as there were gifts underneath it. That's all we cared about. We didn't care if the Christmas tree was um, orange with a, with a maroon stripe. We didn't care. We just wanted the gifts. So we had a Christmas. Uh, did you have one? Did you? Huh? If you go to an antique store now or a collection place and you see one of the old original ones, those things bring big money. Uh, and I don't. You can buy them online. You can go online and buy them now. They're kind of hot deals. Uh, you can have one just like we did back in the fifties when they were hot stuff. Uh, but uh, they were innocently hot stuff back then. It was a neat idea. And now it's kind of a jab at the society and things like that. But uh, if you had one, uh, they're worth a lot of money. And if you have one, you still have one. You go find one for sure. Um, about this time of year, my folks would come to me, and my brother was five years younger than me, so the, the, they just got him whatever they wanted to get him. But they would come to me when I was seven or eight or nine or ten, and uh, what do you want for Christmas? Well, that was an immediate uh, charge for me to make a list. If you make that list, Rex, well, then we'll get it to Santa, and which is fair enough. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to work. And uh, Santa will take a look at, the, at that list, and you might get, uh, a couple things from that list. Now that was it was always a couple things. It was never get you get everything on the list. That was that was never in the Santa never bit for that. Let me tell you that you might get a couple things. Might keyword maybe you, you could be could get a couple list things from that list. So I would diligently and I'd call my buddy sometimes. We would lay on that living room floor 
uh, which had carpet uh, uh, one one uh, one uh, depth north of uh, linoleum. You know, just <laughs> it wasn't much nap to the carpet when we were kids uh, out there. And we would make a list. We'd lay there on that floor and we'd go through. Now, the section that we went through the most, with the Sears catalog or the Ward's catalog, usually, or both, was the, uh, the, the section where they had football uniforms and helmets because we were all Iowa stars at, back then and, and, and or the cowboy stuff, uh, the BB guns and the Davy Crockett uniforms and, and, the, and the Roy Rogers holster set up and the Gene Autry stuff and the Hopalong Cassidy stuff and the, uh, all, all those things, the rifles and, and the Fanner 50s, all that stuff was in those catalogs. We write everything down. Well, I got to have that. Well, if we get the Davy Crockett in for her, we got to have the hat. We got to get old. All that stuff was in there, and that's what we did. And uh, we we spent the. Uh, we'd all I we'd always put in stuff like new bike, pony, folks. That was always a big deal. Going to get a pony. Well, my dad uh, would say, I don't think Santa probably going to bring the pony because we live in town. What are we supposed to do with the pony? You probably won't get the pony. Now, remember that was always uh, that was always crossed off this way early. Uh, and uh, we always, he said, who's going to feed the pony? And of course I would raise my, we, I am my buddy. We'll, we'll feed him. We, if you just get the, the, the pony, Mr. Brand said, we'll feed him. Well, that would last about three days. Uh, <laughs> they were right. But you know, we, we, that was, that's what was best for us. It was, you know, not to get a pony. We didn't, we didn't realize that we didn't agree with that. So, so that's what we did. We, we talked about it. We thought about it. We did everything we could on that list. And that list would be a page long. I don't know. Kids now probably want a computer or a DVD. I, don't, I was going to say DVD. They said, I don't want those anymore. Everything's on a computer. I don't know what kids want. I don't have any kids. So I don't have a clue. Uh, <laughs> uh, mom and dad just want the eggnog. Speaking of eggnog, the first time I tasted it, my mom, are having a, my mom and dad having a party. And they had the, a bunch of people come to the house, and they had eggnog. And I didn't know what eggnog was. And, uh, and it looked, kind of it looked like chocolate milk, only vanilla, kind of thicker than the regular milk that we had. And so my dad said, would you like some? I said, well, sure. Well, what my dad didn't realize was that uh, he gave me a, 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 a swallow over two that he had already pre-mixed. In other words, he already put the booze in. And uh, so I took a drink of that when I was seven or eight, and I rolled up my nose, and I said, that's the worst taste of stuff. So I never tried it again till oh, I don't know, out of college. I'm, I was married before I ever tried it again because I thought I never, I never knew what to pay attention to. So I haven't had it now for five or six years. I don't suppose it's kind of pretty heavy duty, fat calorie and, and calorie and stuff like that. But uh, uh, I wouldn't mind to taste it once in a while. But I remember now, I went, years later, when I tasted it, it tasted like just the way it was when I was a kid. I said, this tastes the same. And they said, well, you big dummy, there's booze in that. So that's what I, I must have left the sheltered lice, I guess. So I, did, I did, didn't know that. So, oh, yeah, I see that it's already at the grocery stores, they, these uh Dairies don't make it very uh, very often, so if you enjoy it, go get some. Say, so I want to remind you of this. Now, we're on a big hunt, you know. The, the sun is heading south. The sun turned around and left us last June. And guess what uh, in a couple weeks happens here? The sun hits rock bottom. Uh, the sun uh, its down in South America right now, and those people are having summer creeps. They're having summer while we're slugging, going to slug through winter. The sun is going to reach the bottom uh, here next in on the 21st, I believe it is. So here's today. We're going to start today with my official countdown. Uh, my official countdown says we got to get that sun turned around, coming back this way. That's my first hint, my very first hint, that uh, it's not spring or anything like that. We know that. But the worm has turned, I would call it. So the sunset today here in Iowa City is 4, 436. 436. And it stays right about 436 for, for, for a few days, for several days. It, it really, really does. As a matter of fact, a week from today, it'll be 436. And two weeks from today, it'll be 435. So the sun gets down and the sun hangs around. And if you really want to take a look at it, uh, look outside about 438 because it's about had it. And that sun is really, really low on that southern horizon. It's just uh, if you're up in Alaska right now, you're in North Pole, you're not seeing much sun, which makes you wonder how Santa Claus can get here if it's dark for so long. But somehow he does. And. Somehow he'll, he'll get here. So so that's what we've got going, folks. I want to give you a quick thing here. Are you, if you're ready to move and you want to save on your property taxes, the lowest property taxes are in Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Nevada, and Alabama. That's the lowest property tax. Now, other states might be low, but they might have higher sales taxes, all kinds of things. The highest property taxes, highest, 
the number one state with the highest property taxes, New Jersey. It's out of sight. Illinois, off the chart. New Hampshire, Vermont, and Connecticut. Those people all know how to tax and tax your real estate. Big time deal. The family of four needs this for income if you live in these states. Here are the five states, six states. Here's how much money you need for a family of four to live in these states. This is, these are national averages, folks. Family of, in Hawaii, which is the worst case scenario for that. Nicest weather, but worst if, if you've been out there, everything costs a million dollars. $182,900 for a family of four just, just to maintain. <coughs> Excuse me. Next is, watch how far this goes down, Massachusetts, 142 dollars so $40,000 less than uh, Hawaii. New York, 128000 That's even lower than Massachusetts. Arkansas, no, excuse me, Alaska, Alaska, 113 because they have to import everything like Hawaii because nothing really grows there except snow, snow drifts and moose. Uh, and uh, Maryland, 110000 so there you go. The, the most expensive is, is Iowa, is 182 The cheapest is Mississippi. And where's Iowa, you might say? Well, in Iowa, a family of four. Uh, for the, the standard uh, 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 normal living lifestyle with a home and a car and school, yeah, Iowa is in at the $78,025, about middle of the pack. So uh, $78,000 in Iowa. So that's how a family of four would stack up, my wife and I. I don't know. We never had any kids, and we probably couldn't have made it on that. <laughs> we spent. I, no, I wouldn't say we spent everything. I don't mean that because we didn't. Uh, we're okay. Uh, that's how much it costs. And if you say it's a family of four uh, on 78000 can't make it, I, I don't disagree with that. But uh, if you pay some attention to what you buy and how you spend it, you can. Uh, I'm just going to tell you about that for sure. Well, a senior lady tells me that my husband and I think we're all set for winter. We sat down last week and just talked about stuff about, about the house. And she says to me, what is the first thing you would recommend to fix in the spring? Okay? So I'll leave you with this, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I give these people a big credit for thumbs up. They sat down and talked. All they talked about, started talking about stuff on or around the house. Nothing else. She said, we wouldn't talk about vacation or the kids or the car, just about the house. So she said, what is the first thing you would recommend we fix uh, in the spring? And the answer to you should be this. Here's this should be anything that is unsafe. Anything that's unsafe. You're going to trip down the steps because the top step's loose or the banister fell off or you've got a 14 throw rug fixed. Anything that's safe. And in the spring, we're going to go up on the roof and we're going to fix that roof. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having more fun than a barrel of monkeys, except for the fact that the Iowa football is done. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that people are spending more time concerned about who the new offensive coordinator will be rather than who will be uh, who you're going to go to the, the, the caucus for. That's the way it is. We've got our priorities, by the way. So uh, hats off to you. Thank you to all veterans. Tomorrow's Pearl Harbor Day. Thank you to each and everyone who gave their life. Uh, Iowa women play tonight. And tell you what, I'm going to come back next week if the creek don't raise. Have a great week. Thanks for listening to Senior Talk. This is Rex Brandstetter saying see you next time. So long. Looking for a place with a fun, casual atmosphere? Check out the Soul and American Legion, a downtown staple for decades and a gathering place for veterans of all ages from all over the area. The Soul and American Legion focuses on the basics, like home-style breakfast, diner-style baskets,